whenever you guys are ready. Cool. Can you talk through it? So our project was to uh, build a inference of CNN on IPJ, and we first thought of putting the uh, like uh, a camera onto the whiteboard and write it there. But what, what it turns out is that analyst it uses a back background, dark, a dark background, and it is very strict to it. It has to be very grayscale, and like there need to be so it cannot be binary. It has to be grayscale. Um, like with actual value on the edges of the image, otherwise it doesn't work. Like technically, we could have trained our CNN with like the whiteboard drawing, but we just didn't have that time to try those things. So we stick with the MNIST um, dataset, and basically what we did is we wrote a very simple CNN that is two layers. And the first layer, I, I don't know if you can see that. Sure, I'll pull in so, here. Yeah. It's a really simple one. The first layer is the is a one channel to two channel five by five convolution. Uh -huh. The second layer is a uh, two channel to three channel. Oh, this is not updated because I haven't run. Sure. It. Yeah. Uh, it's basically a two channel to three channel. It's three by three here, and the CNN size is three by three. So we're basically doing a twenty five bit uh, value convolution in the first one, nine value convolution on the second one, and doing um ReLU and max pool in between, and then for the last layer. And because this is three layers instead of two, so it's actually a 75 to 10 MLP. And what we did is we created a single module for CN that can be adapted to any layer size and as long as the straightest one. So like we actually use this, we invert the same module to do the first uh, CNN's computation and the second CNN's computation. So that way, like if you want to add more, mm -hmm. you can just record module and then connect it out and, and 10K I think like that. And uh, let's just show you the very first step of generating a number. Do you want to draw sure. a number on this? Uh, so how do I, with number? the mouse? Yeah, with the mouse. Okay, let's see. I will draw the number. Let's do seven. All right, and let's put it here. So our, uh, <clears throat> our communication protocol right now is after you draw it, uh, we'll run a, a very simple Python program that uses like Torch Vision. Um, to first convert it to a uh, grayscale. Okay. And then co converting it to a grayscale like this. And this is like this is like the uh, validation for us. So this is um, after converting to grayscale, we render it back to make sure the image uh, this image actually updates. And then we just send it to the uh, FPGA directly uh, using Python. So right now it's uh, uploaded to the FPGA. Uh, Right. So, and Kaja can talk to you about the parameters that we've been putting. Into okay. The so after after we use SCT to input the image in, and we have a HPS code here. We call load MNIST, and it will it will initialize the M10K of the in input data of the M10K and load this uh, image to this. And after we run this, and here. So it knew it was a seven. Yeah. Very cool. And all the parameters that we, that we trained with the Python, uh, with the PyTorch is all preloaded, uh, hard coded in our program, program. But technically, we could open up new PIL ports. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're using the same structure, you could reload the entire thing just by um, put, putting different ways to it. So. It, it'll be able to solve any problem that can be solved by this certain structure that you've put it into the FPGA. Yeah, and also we we have written some Python script to uh, generate the hex file to need those RAM. Yeah, yeah. so every time, um, like right now, even though we don't have the flexibility of programming, we're changing the weight later, but right now, technically, if you, uh, you can just change uh, each uh, memory IP port setting uh, to the hex file and then just probably resynthesis that. And we can actually change we've memory files without resynthesizing. Yes, yeah. if we have more PIO into it. So we currently we only have one PIO that's connected to, to the input data. Well, you, can, you can just do it from the ports interface. You can load a new memory file without recompiling. Oh, cool. We didn't know that. That's right. It's nice. obscure. <laughs> <laughs> like so many things in ports. Um, <laughs> and I think it, we used this. Uh, 
report is clean project that we kind of just build everything and let me see if we have the report here so before when we started doing mlp like we all for knowledge spam 28 is not enough it's like at least three times not enough if we okay. want to solve a 28 by 28 into 10. Mm. and what we did is after we did the same and, and that's actually a good thing about here is that it decreases the number of families mm -hmm. really like dramatically and what you can see here if I still can show you on the flow for summary, right. We actually only use 3% of the memory bits. So it could be a lot bigger. Very yeah, cool. The uh, logic utilization, so these are mainly used in like doing the uh, multiplications and uh, doing the convergence and that is currently at 22%. So we still have like rooms to add like two or three more layers. So you can put solve a lot more complicated problems. Yeah, and for the ping, like that's that's the ping that came yeah. with project. And yeah. for the DSP, we're only using 15, and that's the same as uh, utilization in logic. Like we have, we have room for a lot more, and this is kind of just a proof concept that this is a really great platform to do this. Yeah. Really cool. Do you have more or do you want to try more numbers? Can we can we do one more maybe? Sure. No just to show that it's working. So let's see. Right. I'll do. Uh, Let me see. Let's try the number, oh, where's my mouse? There it is, three. That's actually way standard than when we tested. Yeah, we, tested we gave it really weird series and it's still able to do that. So you've, you've converted the image to grayscale now you yep. just SCP'd that image over to the yeah. HPS. Oh, we, we also like use script to change the numbers into a that dot that for that C can understand. Okay, it's sure. And it knew that it was a three. Maybe you want to try some weird number looking number? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's yeah, let's try one weird one. So let's see. I'm gonna do uh, how about a two, but one of those weird curly ones. Oh. Oh, mercy. <laughs> 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 that would display like alpha or something. <laughs> well, good thing we only trained it with numbers. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. And I think like if we have more time, we could do what Bruce just suggested. Like we could actually, I think that could like they actually created their, their own test set, so we can kind of write numbers on the whiteboard, and if we trained all model with it, then we'll be able to do it. But sure. Sadly, we don't have enough time. Before <laughs> yeah. well, you guys sleep. <laughs> <laughs> At least you should. Very nice. <laughs>